All right, in this video, we're going to evaluate the derivative of f of x equals one over the square root of x at the x value of one fourth. We're gonna be using the limit definition of the derivative to accomplish this, and I am personally using the limit definition with the h. All right, so what I have here is the limit definition of the derivative with the one fourth plugged in for the a value right here. What I'm now gonna do on the side is I'm going to simplify these two expressions, f of one fourth plus h and f of one fourth. Here again, I'm just simplifying the components of the numerator here. I always do this on the side just so I don't have to rewrite this a million times. When I plug one fourth plus h into my function, I get this right here, nothing really going on interesting there. When I plug one fourth in, um, importantly here, the square root of one fourth is one half, and then one divided by one half is two. If this is interesting, if it's not so obvious to you, think of this as one, again, divided by one half, when I divide by a fraction, I can flip it and multiply by the reciprocal. So what this actually becomes is one times two, which is why this evaluates to two. All right, so all I've done here is I've replaced f of one fourth plus h and f of one fourth with these expressions that I calculated over here. Now is the work of evaluating this limit. By the way, this is a particularly tricky one because I have the square root and it's a fraction. So the original equation, because it was this rational radical, it makes it particularly difficult. What I'm gonna have to do are two separate steps in order to evaluate this. I'm going to clear up the fractions up here, which means I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator of this complex fraction by the LCD. And then I'm also gonna need to rationalize the numerator of sorts. I'm gonna multiply by the conjugate and that will take care of the square root. All right, that was a quick mouthful. Let's step back and just attack these steps. First thing I wanna do is take care of the complex fraction. To do that, what I'm going to do is multiply the numerator and denominator here by the LCD of the numerator. In this case, I, this is not a fraction really. I could think of this as two over one. What I'm going to do is multiply by this square root of one fourth plus h. When I multiply both of these terms by the square root of one fourth plus h, when I first multiply it here, I just cancel that denominator out. So this just becomes a one. And then in the second term, obviously I'm just gonna get two times this square root of one fourth plus h. In the denominator here, as always, I'm not gonna multiply this out. There's really nothing to do anyways. I'm just gonna multiply this uh, h by the one fourth, the square root of one fourth plus h. All right, so why I did that just to recap was to take care of the fact that I had this complex fraction where I had fractions in the fractions. When I multiply by the LCT of that LCD of that numerator, I no longer have fractions. One could argue, well, heck, Mike, that doesn't look much better than it was. But the important part is I've gotten rid of those two sets of fractions, the numerator and the bigger fraction. What I'm going to do now is attack this square root. I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the numerator to do this. So again, when I multiply by the conjugate, what the result of this will be is the first term squared minus the second term squared. Again, this is the difference of squares or the multiplication of conjugates. So the numerator is where things will work out really nice. When I multiply these together, I'll get one squared, which is one, minus two times the square root of one fourth plus h squared. When I square this term, I'm gonna get a four from this two. And when I square this factor, I simply just get rid of the square root, which will give me one fourth plus h. Now the denominator in this case, it won't look really nice, but it won't be a huge deal as you'll see in just a second. What I end up getting is just this mess of multiplications, surely showing the two steps that I've done. I'm not gonna foil this out or distribute this in any way. Again, my goal is I wanna take care of this h in the denominator, which is the whole reason for these moves. I could not plug the h in here because it would make the denominator go to zero. I'm using algebraic tricks to get rid of that issue. All right, then what I'm going to do now is clean up this numerator, distribute this negative four to both of these terms right here. When I do that, negative four times one fourth is a negative one, and then negative four times the h is a negative four h. 
these one and negative one cancel each other out, giving us zero. And then, uh, really, because I'm a little bit lazy, I don't want to rewrite this whole thing again. I'm going to do this next move now. So all I have now is this negative one fourth h in the numerator. I can do what I, exactly what I wanted to do. I can now cancel this factor of h between the numerator and the denominator. And now, as long as my denominator doesn't go to zero, I can evaluate this limit simply by plugging in h equals zero in this equation. And I can see right here, especially because there's no subtractions of any sort, plugging into zero will be just fine. We've done most of the steps. Again, this was the tough algebra right here, was to clear the fractions and then take care of the square roots with the conjugate. Now to evaluate this, um, what I'm gonna get up here in the numerator is negative one fourth as always. This is the square root of one fourth. The square root of one fourth is one half. In this factor right here, I still have a one plus two times, in this case, again, this is a one fourth plus zero. The square root of one fourth is one half. And now I just need to finish off this arithmetic. And because I'm coming out of room here, I'm not gonna show all these steps, but just to say, this is two times one half. So this is one. One plus one is two, which then gives me negative four over one half times two. Um, this is one half times two is a one, meaning this is a negative four over one, giving me negative four. That was a lot quickly, but I want to recap all of the steps and what we were doing. Again, we're evaluating the function 1 over the square root of x at x equals 1 fourth. We're evaluating the derivative, excuse me. We plug that definition in here. Now, again, this is a particularly difficult one because it's a rational, meaning a fractional expression or function, and it has the square root. Those two separate things were taken care of in two separate moves. First, I cleared the complex fraction, meaning the fraction inside of the bigger fraction, by multiplying by the LCD of the numerators here. After I did that, I then multiplied by the conjugate of the numerator. I'm doing that to get rid of this square root right here. If I do all that correctly, then I'll get to the point where I can cancel that common factor of h. Yes, if you're thinking, oh my god, that looks ugly, as I said before, that is a lot. There's a lot going on. But the end goal was just to get rid of this factor of h in the denominator, which made that denominator go to zero as h went to zero. Once I've done that, I no longer have that h factor. I can simply directly substitute my value of h equals zero into my expression. And then, uh, even though there's a lot there, just not making the mistakes as I'm doing my arithmetic and finally evaluating. Lastly, what this negative four means, again, getting lost in all this algebraic stuff, is that negative four is the rate of change of this function at x equals one fourth, or in other words, graphically, this is the slope of the line tangent to this function at the x value of one fourth.